Hi, my name is Rob Lyon. I'm 35 years old and I work as a personal trainer and an exercise physiologist as well as a fitness teacher uh, and assessor. I've had probably 15 to 16 years of experience in this industry. Uh, started as a young age playing cricket and rugby and whatnot growing up. Uh, did an exercise science degree at university many, many years ago. From there, I've done a lot of different things in the fitness industry, you know, everything from uh, working in small gyms, personal training studios, large YMCA, multi-purpose type facilities, managing corporate fitness centers and corporate gyms within large companies. I've also lived and worked overseas. I lived for three years in Phoenix, Arizona, where I, was, where I worked in cardiology. So it was really interesting to get uh, an understanding of the medical and health side of the system and uh, worked as a nuclear medicine and cardiovascular technician there. Uh, from there I came back to Australia about six years ago and I really started to double down and focus more on you know, improving people's quality of life, uh, training clients with medical conditions and special populations. So my role as an exercise physiologist, I really try and focus on looking at exercise as medicine, you know, using it as a, as a medical intervention to help improve people's quality of life, get people off me medication, improve qualities of living. And I find that that's a really important part of what I do. And you know, it's an industry that's definitely heading a lot more down that path as we go with an aging population with an increased reliance on healthcare, uh, with uh, problems with obesity and diabetes and arthritis and all these things uh, becoming more and more prominent over the next 10 to 20 years. I feel as though that's really my, my purpose and my focus is to really help those types of clientele. What I've noticed has changed the most about the fitness industry is the sheer number of people that are coming in as trainers, which I think is fantastic because it was a market that was desperately underutilized and underserviced. You know, I remember when I first started working in fitness facilities, there were about three fitness first gyms in Sydney and that was about it. There were no personal training studios, there was no CrossFit, you know, there was a few university facilities and that was and that was it. And so now we've got such a big, vibrant industry, which is fantastic. Lots of people working in the industry, lots of people prioritizing health and wellness and, and an increase in knowledge and using social media to create platforms. So it's changed drastically over the next over the last 10 years and I'm really looking forward to see where it goes over the next 10. But what I really want to to, to reiterate again is that looking at health and disease is that's a problem that's never really going to go away you know uh, aging populations obesity diabetes and areas that I think are really really important you get really great outcomes out of clients and definitely areas that I love to focus on one of the reasons why I initially rolled in a fitness course, my first fitness course was an exercise science degree at university. I just love sport, you know, playing cricket and rugby growing up, playing at a, at a pretty decent level until I had a few injuries that cut me short. Uh, I just loved learning a lot more about the body, being able to, to write my own fitness programs and try them out in the gym. You know, I did every, every sort of fitness programming imaginable. I was always a very tall and lean, skinny kind of guy. So, you know, I was under direct instructions by football clubs to put on as much muscle as possible. So I went through a lot of different bodybuilding type programs and phases and things like that. So it was really my love of sport that got me into the industry. And then as I got into the industry, I really loved learning a lot about the anatomy and physiology and science behind how the body works. I think the human body is a fascinating thing and that's what's really propelled me forward and then ultimately put me down the career path and especially the niche that I'm currently working with. There's a massive potential for athletes moving into this fitness industry when they retire. I mean, first of all, being a, a recognizable face, having a name, having a bit of a brand behind you is going to be great for you from a business and marketing perspective. That goes without saying. But also, you've been in the trenches. You know, you've understood all the different types of programs that have been thrown at you. You've dealt with injuries in your career. You understand the role of nutrition and good night's sleep and all of that and, and balancing uh, uh, football and social demands and media demands. And, and all of that is going to put you in a really good stead to be able to empathize with clients. You know, you've uh, had injury setbacks. You, you've You've gone through periods where your form's been good, where your form's been no good. That's no different from a normal person who's had times where they've been really consistent with exercise and times where they've fallen off the wagon. So you can really develop that empathy and be able to use your elite training background and professional athlete sort of knowledge and really ex uh, give that to those general population clients and have them really understand and, and build that rapport with people, which I think is really important. Some of my general pieces of advice for athletes moving into the health and fitness industries, don't just 
always assume you're gonna come into the industry and end up training other athletes. Uh, I've told everybody that training athletes is the easiest thing that you'll ever do. The athletes are very much, yes sir, no sir, how many, how much, what time, where do I have to go? That's the easy stuff. Training a client that's unmotivated, that won't do what you say, that cancels sessions, that drinks too much and eats too much and does all the wrong things, how to get inside their head, how to get them to create behavioral changes that stick with them in the long term, is some of the most challenging but also some of the most rewarding things that you'll do. So I just don't want you to feel as though you just going to go from an athlete to athlete sort of perspective. I think there's a lot of value to be given in training general population clients. Another thing that I see a lot of fitness trainers doing wrong is really trying to come out and, and develop like a, like a niche saying, oh, I'm only gonna work with this type of person, or I'm only gonna work with that type of person. You know, work with everybody when you first start. You know, take on every client, take on the good ones, the bad ones, the ones that are easy to train, the ones that are hard to train. You know, they're the people that are really gonna uh, build your experience and build your knowledge base and get you confident that you can handle anything in this industry. Uh, like I said, training athletes is the easiest thing in the world. Training only a certain type of client pigeonholes you, puts you in a box. So really gain as much experience in this industry as you can. Try a few things out. Be empathetic. Really try and understand where people are going, coming from. And you know, don't just use your, your, your name and your brand to get you in the door, but without backing it up with some real substance behind you. If I was an athlete and if I was transitioning into a fitness education, one of the first things that I would do is I would be looking for really high level quality role models and mentors within this industry. You can look at ex-professional athletes that are already in the industry, pick their brains, learn as much as you can from them. I'm a massive fan of volunteering, interning, spending time, spending some of your own money to educate yourself and work under these really, really good quality coaches because they're going to put you through a lot of doors. What they're also going to do is give you a lot of insight that you're not going to have or it's going to take you years and years of experience with clients to get. So one of my big things to do is to find role models and mentors, find people within your industry that you aspire to, learn from them, ask them questions, pick their brains. From there, there your opportunities are endless. You might not be looking at starting a business straight away. You might be looking at moving into a larger gym where you can work under uh, uh, established structures, understand marketing, understand business, understand lead generation and sales and how to retain clients. So not just looking at industry leaders, but also personal training, business managers and development managers. One of the biggest things that I didn't do when I first came into the industry is because there wasn't a lot of it, is I didn't work with a lot of business development guys early on in my career. Uh, don't just assume that that's something that comes to you easily because you're going to have to work just as hard as the next person to develop leads, to develop clients, to build your business. So I would definitely look at that, find some good high quality role models and mentors that you can click with and also work hard on your business development early on. So some of, some of my tips for athletes trying to gain their first clients is first of all, being able to empathize with the client, understanding where they're at and what they need to do. You know, it's very basic, basic stuff. They have a problem and you need to provide the solution to that problem, okay? So you've got to ask questions, you've got to probe deep, you've got to ask them why they're in it, why they're trying to do it, what has worked in the past, what hasn't worked in the past, okay? Really understanding and getting inside a client's head and understanding their motivations is gonna help you deliver programming and concepts that's gonna get them the best results, okay? If you're just starting out, if you just wanna get your certificate three and get your feet wet in the industry, become a group class trainer, start running boot camp, start getting yourself in front of 10 to 15, 20 people at a time. That'll really build your confidence, it'll build your delivery, it'll build your ability to be able to cater classes that suit all different levels of participants, give some clients easier and harder exercises, and that's a big confidence thing because you are moving into a new field and it can be difficult at times, so developing confidence, asking the right questions, and really connecting with people is the way to go. The hardest thing about this industry is, well, there are quite a few things. So the first thing is physically it does take quite a lot of toll on you. I understand as an athlete, you're probably well used to that, but it's a lot of early morning starts. It's a lot of late nights. There's a lot of hustling and trying to build your own business. You know, This isn't the type of industry where typically you can take time off and get paid for. This isn't the type of industry where you get paid when you're not training clients. You know, you're working by the hour or you know, you're paying rent to a gym. So there's a lot of onus and emphasis on you to keep growing and keep building your business. That's some of the hardest things to do. Um, so you have to be well organized, you've got to be motivated, you've got to uh, be able to accept that there's going to be some periods of time where it's going to be difficult, it's going to be hard to get that first client, then it's going to be hard to get your second client and then it's a snowball, things start getting a little bit easier. So they're my big, 
big piece of advice is understand that it isn't the easiest thing to do in the world. One of the hardest things as well is sometimes it's hard to maintain your motivation. You know, I've been doing it for 15 years and there are still some days where I wake up and it's hard for me to give all my energy to other people. So, you know, definitely this industry suits people that are able to give energy to others and able to, to, to take some negative energy on board and really help your clients feel better because at the end of the day, if they're feeling better at the end of the session than they did when they started, then you're on the right track. So look, there's a huge opportunity to make money in this industry. You know, uh, there are a lot of trainers that are making making very, very large sums of money, and a lot of it comes down to doing the simple things right and doing them effectively. Um, if you've got clients that are long-term clients that are loyal to you, that refer through word of mouth, that's the best way to build your business. You know, you can start small and build it up as we go. From there, you can start to leverage into different things like corporate health and fitness. You can start leverage your brand into some online training or some marketing promotions and, and things like that but it is very, very, very lucrative because of the, the fact that, it, that there's a big market. We've got a massive captive market at the moment for health and fitness. And remember, it's not just people trying to lose weight and look good naked. It's not just people trying to improve their sport performance, but it's people trying to improve their health. It's people trying to improve their well-being. People try to, trying to get a better night's sleep, be a better husband, be a better wife, you know. So there's so many different avenues for you to go down and it can be very lucrative, but you've got to work. You've got to accept that it's going to be difficult at first. There's going to be a few lean months there might be a few lean years but as long as you keep progressing you keep building your business you keep working hard at it and you keep delivering to your clients the sky's the limit for you so some of my big tips for getting through a course like this is to make sure that you're setting aside time each week that's non-negotiable to work on the course. It's one of these things that a lot of other things in life can get in, get in the way and we typically tend to put our studies on the back burner. So if you're even if you're only committing a few hours a week, you're blocking that time off, it's completely non-negotiable and you've got no distractions and that's all you're doing is you're working on the course. From there, we tend to look at the big picture and work backwards. So what you might do is see how long it takes for you to get through the first component of the course okay if it took you six weeks well you might set a goal that in the next six weeks you're going to get the second component of the course done and if you set yourself a bit of a time frame and work consistently towards that and like I said keep your time blocked off that's non-negotiable just like a meeting or just like a training session that's you working on, on your studies then you'll get through it but the key is to remain consistent if you get frustrated if you get walk walk away from the course you won't come back for a month all your momentum stops and it's really hard to get started again